ready. Welcome everybody to the August 7, 2018 Board of Commissioners meetings. Please silence your cell phones, pagers, and other electronic communication devices. Agendas are located at the back of the, the chambers for you to follow along or to uh, see what's going on. Uh, start the meeting out with a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Mr. Mark DeSanto, Commissioner. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you, everybody. Next on the agenda is to re review and approve the agenda, and I do have uh, an item that needs we can remove. It's item 14 at the applicant's request. Move approval with uh, withdrawal of number 14. Okay. It's been moved by Hancock, seconded by Ron to approve the agenda minus 14. Any discussion? See none. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next, we have the consent agenda, and that will be Ms. Holly Henney's. Commission Office Manager. That the Good right morning, time? Commissioners. For public notice, the Board of Commissioners uses a consent agenda to act on non controversial and routine items. The consent agenda is acted upon by one motion and vote of the board. Items may be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda at the request of a board member or a citizen. Today's consent agenda contains the following items. Approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of July 17, 2018 to acknowledge disinterment permit number 1227670. Number seven is to authorize the chair's signature to the revised order of organization and incorporation for the Lakota Lake Encampment Road District, effective for tax year 2018 and after, with the legal description as presented by the auditor. And finally, number eight is to authorize the chair's signature to the order reaffirming organization and incorporation of the Cedar Gulch Sanitary and Water District with the legal description as presented by the auditor. Thank you, Holly. Is there any member from the public who would like to have anything from the consent agenda polled? Seeing none, any from the board, commissioners? Seeing none, I'd look for a motion for approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Moved by Mark DeSanto. Second. Seconded by Ron Buskard. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next, we come to regular agent, uh, agenda items. Number nine. Lien request by KNL continued from the 717-2018 Board of Commissioners meeting. At the request, Brian, is this? Never mind, I'll get. I'm going to make a motion to table it. Okay. Or maybe not. Not table, sir. Um, commissioners, the applicant has met with staff. She's worked out arrangements. We'll start making a payment plan. So I just need a motion from you to acknowledge the request of staff to pull it from consideration. There we go. So moved. Okay, that was your motion? Yeah, that's what I meant. That's what Ron meant. I didn't say it. Perfect. Way, Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next we have item 10, 2018 Central States Fair Report from Mr. Ron Jeffries. Ronald J. Jeffries. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission. Uh, Ron Jeffries, General Manager of Central States Fair. Uh, just to give you a quick little update, uh, Central States Fair dates are August 17th through the 26th, uh, coming up right away. Uh, we're excited about this year's lineup in the grandstand. Uh, our past sales are about 16% ahead of last year, which uh, is just uh, a really strong showing. Uh, we're excited about that. We think it's because of all the rain. Uh, the uh, egg community's got enough hay and, and aren't going to have to buy feed, so we're, 
We're excited about what they're bringing to town. Um, we have added a couple of uh, events. Last year, we added Longhorn cattle to our cattle shows. This year, we've added the Dexter cattle as well. Uh, just more egg community development out there. We also are hosting the Cattle Dog Championships. Uh, it's a competition much like sheep dogs, only this time we're, we're using cattle, which don't quite herd as well as the sheep do when they're trying to run them through the course. So it'll be an interesting uh, event. Uh, we're av having the South Dakota Arm Wrestling Championships. Uh, it's a state championship for arm wrestling and in the the winners of that division we've got openings we can get you all in we've got a weight class for everybody and so yeah, so he <laughs> George. <laughs> <laughs> just just <laughs> appoint the chair <laughs> but the uh, it's kind of neat it's it's a qualifier uh, for a national tournament an Arnold uh, Schwarzenegger tournament in uh, California and to qualify for that tournament, you have to win a major tournament. And so this one has been established as a major tournament, the only major tournament in South Dakota to, to allow you to qualify for this national tournament. Uh, we've got all kinds of exciting things going on for the kids. Uh, we've been working very well with several different nonprofits. I don't know if all of you are aware, but we have a number of nonprofits that come and use Central States Fair as their way to earn money for their yearly projects from the uh, Kiwanis to the Cosmopolitans, uh, to the Lions, the Knights of Columbus, uh, North Rapid Civic Association, all those groups come back in and provide some kind of service during the fair. And then we in turn provide them with stipends for providing that service and they use that as their fundraiser. And so we're excited about having everybody to come back, back out and participate again. And uh, most importantly, we would like you to find time in your schedules to come back out and join us Friday the 17th at 3 o'clock, we're doing a ribbon cutting uh, for the kickoff of the fair. And then, of course, all week long, we'd invite you to come back out. If you'd like a tour of the facilities and see what's been going on down at the fairgrounds, we'd be happy to do that. And I'd answer any questions you might have. <clears throat> Ron, the only question I have is uh, last year you started up the cultural awareness <laughs> group again. Is that continuing? Yes, Indigenous Peoples Day is the Saturday the 18th. And so we've got an entire day where we're working with uh, LaFon Janice here to provide several Native American programs that will help uh, uh, non-traditional people <laughs> come back in and have a chance to learn about Native culture. Uh, we've got teepees, we've got dancers, we've got drummers, we've got singing groups, we've got a Native fashion show that will all take place on the McDonald's stage this year. Uh, last year we held it in the Soule building and it was just too, too large to get everything in. So we moved it to the McDonald stage this year. Covers a better part of an entire day that Saturday. We also have a new stage inside the Soule building. Uh, now that's an air conditioned building. So you get shade and air conditioning, a little bit nicer setup. And so we're excited about having the family stage inside the Soule building as well. So. Thanks. So any questions? Yeah. I do. Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mark. When is the arm wrestling contest? It is the last Saturday. Last Saturday. Yep, so they can weigh in the day before or the day of, and then uh, arm wrestling starts at uh, 1 o'clock that day. Oh. When, uh, <clears throat> uh, on Friday you had said ribbon cutting what time? 3 o'clock. I got one more question, more serious. Sure. Have you had any discussions with the city now that they're building a new monstrous arena over there? Are they going to try to cut you out of some stuff, or... Uh, has there been any discussions about any of that? Well, I, I hope not. Uh, we uh, we hope that, you know, the presentation throughout the uh, planning for the vote was to expand the Black Hill Stock Show. And so we're hoping to, to come to the table for those negotiations, those discussions. We've got a myriad of things that we can offer to help grow the show. And so we're excited to be able to get a chance to present those. Good. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Oh, yeah. Ron, I take it the donuts are in the back? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes, in the way back. Huh? <laughs> oh, thank you, guys. Thanks, Ron, all you do. Uh, next item, number 11, is items from the auditor. Cindy Moeller. Good morning, Commissioner. Cindy Moeller from the auditor's office. First thing that we have on the agenda for you is a public hearing for a special retail on off sale malt beverage and wine license for the Rushmore Hockey Association for an event that they're holding on September 15th. So we'd like approval of that special license. Chairman. Okay. Ms. Hadcock. Dolly Lane Greenhouse has a liquor license. 
um, we're working on the special malt beverage. Right I'll now. make a motion to grant the Rushmore Hockey Association special malt beverage license for, uh, I don't know, what is it, uh, September 15th? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Second. Moved and seconded. What? Jim. Go ahead. I guess I didn't understand. They they have a Jolly Lane Greenhouse Incorporated has a liquor license? Malt beverage. Which is? They're applying for a new on-off sale malt beverage license. That's the Rushmore Hockey or the liquor license is from the Jolly Lane because it says liquor license application. The special license Rushmore Hockey is a, the request for the special license, which yep. is the first item. And then the new on off sale malt beverage at Jolly Lane is the second item that we have. Well, yeah, item A, Jolly Lane is the second one that you're talking about. Right. Item B. I see what you're so saying. So the first one that that Busker just and got first and seconded is? Yes, sir. Okay. So we'll go to this one first, then come back to Jolly Okay. There we go. So we have a motion on the floor to approve the retail on sale uh, malt beverage yes, second. and seconded by Busker, or yes. Mr. DeSanto for the Rushmore Hockey Association. Any further discussion? Any from the public? See none. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now we come to item B. That is the new on off sale malt beverage license for Jolly Lane Greenhouse. Okay, now Ms. Hackock, you're so asking it's, if it's new. Is, is it new? It's a new license, yeah. And then they can serve wine and beer at Jolly Lane Greenhouse? Just the beer, the malt, malt beverage based. Beverages. That's how they get jolly. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. They're going to serve that to the plants? Um, that's kind of, I don't know, that's just kind of strange, but. I think they might be planning on having some events, possibly. That's possible. I'm not really um, sure what their intentions are with that. Um, I would add that the taxes are current on that. So we on all of them before they can be approved. Yeah. I can just. For the little insight, I've been down to Jolly Lane when they have their uh, roasted pepper things and they have more, a little bit of event, so I'm thinking that's probably why they're going that route. Okay. Ooh. Move for approval. Moved by DeSanto for approval. Second. Seconded by Buscrude. Any further discussion? Any from the public? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> item C. The next item that we have is a budget <laughs> supplement for the general fund law enforcement budget. Um, this is supported by current year revenues and it is in the amount of $7,575. In my motion. Moved by Hadcock. <clears throat> Seconded by LaCroix. And this is for uh, the vehicle replacement that I remember I was reading through this. Yes. So part of the insurance. Anybody here? Is there any question? Brian, you got any just a little bit of a report on this? I read through it. And not, Good but, morning. Brian mm -hmm. Mueller, uh, Pennington County Sheriff's Office. We uh, had planned, we had previously come uh, in front of you a few months ago and asked to declare this vehicle surplus because it was going to be used for a trade-in. And before we were able to actually trade it in, it was uh, involved in a motor vehicle accident. It was a total loss. We actually received more money from the insurance than what the trade value was going to be. So we've gotten the check from the insurance company. We're just asking to supplement that in so we can utilize it uh, in conjunction with the vehicle purchase that it was planned for. Thanks, Brian. Chairman. Ms. Hancock. So a motion first for the hearing and then then we can do the supplement, right? This is the hearing, Ms. Yeah. Hancock. This is the hearing? Yes. Yeah. So we don't have to do a motion for... You did that already. Just approve the supplement. Would that be your motion? Yes, sir. Your motion be to approve the supplement for the 2018 general fund law enforcement budget in the amount of 7575 
from the current year non-budgeted revenue. The second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item D. The next supplement that we have is to approve a supplement to the 2018 General Fund Law Enforcement Budget in the amount of 97500 from current non-budgeted revenue. Are you my motion? Okay. We have a motion to approve the supplement of the 2018 General Law Enforcement Budget in the amount of 975 from the current year non-budget revenue. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by... Uh, Mr. DeSanto, any further discussion? Yeah, I have Ms. one. Mr. Buskert. Uh, okay, this is from the Office of Justice Programs for the, with the, the body cameras. Yes. Good point, Ron. I, that it, this is for the body cameras right. that are coming in from the grant, so it's good that the public know that where the money's coming from and did, have you received the, the cameras and are getting the training already? We did. We've uh, received the cameras already, and they're up and operational, and they're, you know, all of our patrol deputies and the Rapid City Police Department are utilizing them as we speak, and it's uh, working out really good. We've already got some really good uh, footage from them and uh, has helped with some things that we're working on, so it's been a really good investment, and in, in this initial uh Initial round of funding is, uh, you know, the, the grant money uh, to help us offset that that the sheriff and Captain Harrison presented during our budget hearings to you, and uh, that covered a majority. This I think the, this invoice was about a, just over $104,000, so uh, this this grant money uh, covered um, almost all of year one for us. Great. Will you will you let us know when uh, they're going to be on TV? Yes. All right, we have a motion for approval. Does anybody else, is there any further discussion? We have a motion for approval in the second. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Next, we come to items from the sheriff. The proposed name and logo for the former NAU property. Oh. Carried over from the July 17th meeting. Yeah, I drew a picture. I'll recognize Barry and oh, This is pretty. I like it. Oh. You should like it. it. Took me hours. You gotta get you us like in it. here so we can put it up for you. It's fine. It's fine. It's, 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 it kicks off. off. It kicks off. Turn your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Just gonna get it. Right. For a little for a little backup on this, folks, we had some discussion on this at two weeks ago for about forty five minutes, and we they were supposed to come back with uh, two options for logos, and this is what they're presenting to the board today. Sorry, we're just working through a little technical sure. difficulty. Uh, Willie Waltrell uh, with the sheriff's office. Barry Tice with Pennington County Health and Human Services. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started as we're we're pulling this up. Uh, just just to start out, as you did a recap there of what we talked about a couple weeks ago, uh, as you can see up up on the screen, that is the original logo that that we brought before you a couple weeks ago. Uh, I would tell you that that's still our recommended logo. We put that through all the paces, all the process. We vented that. We narrowed 20 some logos down to three and then we took that out to all of our partners, different community organ organizations, uh, several hundred folks vented it down to one. That's what we brought and presented. And uh, so I would tell you going forward that is still our recommended logo. And per the direction of Commissioner Hadcock in our last meeting, she asked us to bring an alternative uh, logo uh, to the next meeting, which we did also. And uh, we now have that one up on the board for you to the revised logo for you to take a look at. Thanks, Willie. Mary, anything? I guess I would support what uh, Willie has just stated along with the sheriff is we, you know, after reviewing a number of different logos, um, we, we like the concept with the heart. Um, 
I think this revised version um, also displays it uh, just in a different, just in a different way. So I would, I would support the version of the heart, um, but this is definitely an alternative to it. Okay. Is there any further discussion from people not public from the public that would like to share? I'll go to the commissioners. Chairman. Ms. Hadcock. I'll make a motion um, to approve the revised logo. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the revised logo, which would be the circle. Discussion. My discussion is, is I like the first one better. Um, I was thinking about this hard and heavy this morning. When you look at the heart one, it reminds me, with, uh, two weeks ago when we had this discussion, we had a lot of discussion on what names cross-referencing in. When you see the logo of the heart, you think of hospital, so forth. When you see the circle, you think of Black Hills, I, I won't say it, a bank logo, is, uh, the city's round logo, that type of thing. I think uh, the services that we're providing over there, it's crisis care, emergency care for detox, that type of thing, and it goes along with the Health and Human Service Center being there, and I think that's what people relate that shape too. Uh, and so I won't support the motion on the floor as that. Any further discussion? Mr. Farabee. I think as I recall last uh, time we, somebody, I think it was, it might have been Commissioner Busker to ask about the cost. You have that number for us today? Uh, yes, uh, I'd tell you the initial cost of, uh, again, just uh, in dollars, not in time. and. What we spent vetting that first logo is approximately two thousand dollars, and uh, there's going to be some additional costs now with the design of the new logo. We have not received a bill for that. We just put that together. Do you have a follow up? Well, and and that was in the initial cost. We put this thing on the building. It'll be a more cost, obviously. Yeah, and yes, there there will be for the. But there is my understanding in talking with uh, with buildings and grounds in that project. There was uh, money put aside for signage and all that kind of stuff. So that was budgeted for. I can't say what the dollar amount was, but there was money set aside for the signage on the building. But so far we went to it a couple thousand. Correct. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. DeSanto. Um, I'm on the same page as you, Lloyd. I, I, you know, I, I, I wasn't at the last meeting, but I understood that a lot of the conversation had to do with it looking too much like other logos. I don't. I think that it, there's enough of a difference in it that it, it's a good logo. I, I liked it when Sheriff Tom showed it to me the first time, and I like it now. So, Chairman, Ms. Hadcock. Um, I like the logo. Um, with the hand and the Gumby, but I think it looks too much like the One Heart, and I had said that the first time. Um, one Heart has a feather and a Gumby with a circle with a heart on the top, and we have a heart. And we already had people confusing transformation with restoration, and the transformation is called One Heart now, and we are called the Care Campus with a heart on it. The confusion was for me, and I think other people, because I showed them the two, and I said, which one of these is the One Heart building <coughs> or logo, and they picked ours. So my point was, again, um, that if it says One Heart on it for one building, which is transformation, which people are confusing, and then we have restoration with a heart on it, um, these guys do have a heart on the top of theirs, but I'm going to guess if I had to pick a building or a place where I think people are gonna to go to the one heart, it's gonna be ours first. So um, to me, um, the circle I think is good. It doesn't have the heart on it. It won't be as confusing. And theirs does have a heart on the top with a feather and a Gumby, so, or guy, whatever you wanna call him. So I think the circle is 
is more appropriate, <coughs> um, not to confuse people with the buildings, because I think since we started this, people have been confused by which building is which, and I believe in this case maybe still are until we figure out that we have to, we are county and they are city, um, what they're doing in and uh, the difference. And maybe we're team, which I understand, but um, when you're looking for a building and it's gonna have a heart logo on it, I believe they're gonna go to our building. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Hancock. Mr. DeSanto. Um, on that line of thinking, the logo is also gonna have the large care campus on the sign as well. And possibly some of the confusion right now is that there's no signs on the building at all. Um, but if it's got the care campus and the restoring mind, body, and spirit underneath, I, I would beg to differ with all due respect. And I don't want to speak on behalf of the sheriff or uh, Mr. Welchel, but once we have approval on this, then it's full steam ahead for all the PR and marketing campaign with this to start getting that public education piece out there before our move on the end of September. So, uh, you know, it'll be a full court press on, on making that happen. Thanks. I'd make a substitute motion to recommend the original logo. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to go to the recommended logo for the discussion on that. Seeing none, I, I think we'll go to a roll call vote, please. Busgrove? No. DeSanto? Yes. Bagerby? No. Hadcock? No. LaCroix? Aye. This so motion fails two to three. Yes. So now we're back to the original. Our the original motion was to the circle. Again, we'll do a roll call vote, please. Buscrude? Aye. DeSanto? Nay. Farabee? Yes. Hadcock? Aye. LaCroix? No. Looks like it goes to the circle. Okay. Thank you. And we'll have a subtitle, Money Pit, right? <laughs> subtitle what? Thank you. I didn't say that, did I? Next, we come to item 13, items from Health and Human Services. Barry. Tice. Good morning. I agree. Barry Tice, Director of Health and Human Services. Um, as I noted in the memo, we... Pennington County, the Sheriff's Office, Health and Human Services, um, and a number of different organizations in our community have been uh, discussing for, you know, the West River Behavioral Health Alliance started in March of 2017, but it's really looking at Western South Dakota and the mental health services that are available. And a gentleman by the name of El Scoble had come here probably six to eight months ago and discussed some of his concerns with uh, the mental health services, the capacity of services in our community. And um, so a representative from Helmsley, uh, the Helmsley Foundation became interested in this discussion. And through this conversation, um, we've been working with their foundation on the potential of having a consultant and I should back up a little bit on this, is a number of our different agencies, I speak, uh, uh, of course, on behalf of Health and Human Services, we do a very good job, job of data collection, um, but each agency has a different way of collecting data. And so the goal of this would be this uh, consultant would come in and have some various conversations with Pennington County, with regional health, um, maybe it's Catholic Social Services, Lutheran Social Services, Behavior Management Systems, um, work with some of our partners on the uh, reservations to talk about uh, mental health and what's happening and look at the numbers, um, visit with representatives from the Human Services Center, touch base with folks out in Sioux Falls, and see exactly what's, what's happening in our state. And I say that because to this point, there's data that comes from um, collective uh, agencies, 
but this would help narrow down that uh, focus a little bit by bringing in a, a consultant. And we've had a conversation with a consultant. Um, the group's name is the National Council for Behavioral Health that actually did a study on Montana's behavioral health a couple of years ago. And Montana set up a course like South Dakota Geographically, there's a lot of rural areas. Um, mental health primarily uh, is diverted to billings. Um, and they, they have a large spread across their state, just like South Dakota, it's very vast. And so we are hoping that uh, with your approval, we submit, and we just found out on Friday actually that uh, the Helmsley Foundation approved for us to do a full proposal to them um, with your approval. And the, the it looks like about the estimated cost on this is $118,000 when you include the cost for the consultant. And um, there's a project coordinator that's worked with the sheriff's office. He's also a grant writer, Jim Castleberry, who would help with this. My involvement with it is a little bit of the grant um, writing and pulling a few of these things together. And so the proposal, Helmsley is very, um, they're very, their turnaround time on approving different things is very, it's a quick process. So you, you're invited to do a letter of inquiry, you submit that and then they respond such as they did on Friday and said, we would like you to submit a proposal. Um, the proposal's due a week from yesterday, it's due on Monday. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, they have a trustee meeting in New York City early September, it's right around September 7th or 8th, and they would make their decision. And so we would hear something back <clears throat> early September if they supported this idea. Um, and then we'd work with the uh, National Council for Behavioral Health to set up some times. It, it's their plan to come out and do some focus groups and again, meet with some of these different partners. Um, they're estimating right around nine months to a year uh, would be their, their time involved with this. And then they would come back with what we hope would be some very solid recommendations on um, what they see with the data that's provided and what by, might be needed. I mean, at this point it's very vast whether it's um, a behavioral health facility in South Dakota, in Western South Dakota, if it's increasing services, uh, increasing capacity. Um, but this is what Helmsley's interested in, um, the Helmsley Foundation is interested in looking at. So with that, I, the proposal, as I said, um, it's not done yet yesterday you know, over the weekend I've been working on it along with Jim Castleberry who's in another state and so the pieces will start coming together in the next couple of days um, with it and I would hope here in the next 48 hours we would have a at least a good rough draft of this proposal. Well, Barry this is a, you're applying for the grant so they gather the information do the study if I'm correct and I think probably one of the reasons why you uh, we're probably on the top of the list as number one for the work that you guys, this community has done with the crisis care center as one, but also what I think the information that this would help provide, would be able to provide to the legislatures some of the information and the needs of West River. That could definitely be a, a, a piece to it as well. Yeah, okay. Is there any further discussion? Ms. Hadcock. Um, Barry, I commend you guys for all coming together and, and as a team for local, state, tribal, that's going to be a huge difference. You already know as an alliance, you guys can work a lot stronger than individually. And uh, I agree with this study. I think it's something that we need in West River or even our state. So um, thank you for moving forward with this and listening uh, to people in our community that have been saying this and the man, I forgot his name again, Lloyd, but um, that came up and, and said this was well needed and I truly believe that as well. So just from um, being around you know, for a while and watching some of the things that we need to change and that was one of them, of how we treat our people with mental health challenges. So thank you very for moving this forward. Thanks Deb. Mr. Chair. Mr. DeSanto. Harriet. 
sounds like from my understanding what you just reported that this money will be coming from grants it would come from the Helmsley Foundation from the Helmsley Foundation? yes yeah, okay so the 118 and I say 118,000 um, that was what was put into the letter of inquiry and that's the numbers that have come back from the consultant and the travel expenditures and okay. um, so it's it would be right around there Okay, thank you. Mr. I, Chairman. Oh, sorry. Mr. Busker. Well, I'm going to vote no, uh, mainly because I think this is a, the state of South Dakota should be doing this, not the county of Pennington, because I know what's going to happen. We're going to get all this back, and then we're going to have to have a larger building or over at the care campus, and we're going to start having mental illness uh, proceedings and trying to heal everybody of chronic and severe mental illness in this county. It's a state requirement. It's a state problem, not ours. I'm sorry to say that, and I know it's free money, but I know where this is going. It's going to go the same way that that, that did. Well, we're going to have a building, and then we're going to chain, pull, pull uh, our detox down here. Well, now we've got 50, 60 beds. We're going to heal these people, and you know what? We're not going to. We're not going to cure chronic drugs. I'm sorry, and uh, I, I don't know about chronic uh, severe mental illness. Well, I think we probably need a place like y Yankton out here, but it's not ours. It, it's, I don't think the taxpayers of Pennington County should be paying to heal everybody in Western South Dakota. That's my feelings. Thanks, Ron. Any further discussion? Mr. Farabee. I, uh, I'll second that. Uh, what, what Commissioner Busker had said that uh, <clears throat> It's hard to emphasize enough that yes, the, the state has some responsibility and they should have a West River mental health because of distance. And, and that's what, uh, when uh, Mr. Scoville, I guess it was, came to us about a year ago, pushing that point or, and tr selling, trying to go to the legislature and sell. He wanted our Rapid City's support and our support and we give him support. So I, I stand firmly behind Commissioner Buskerud's comments. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. DeSanto. Um, we also drafted a resolution addressing a West River uh, that was taken to legislature, I believe, um, asking for a uh, uh, West River mental health facility and suggested either putting it in Hot Springs or here in Rapid, um, but to bring additional, not only a, additional help for the mental health, for the mentally ill, but uh, it would also provide additional jobs for this area. So I'm in agreement as well. Mike, I'll make a comment. I, I agree. understand where Ron and George are coming from on this because I think he's right. You know, we end up taking it over, but I think our sheriff's department, our county, we're stuck because we're not getting the support. I mean, we haven't been personally involved with a lot of the stuff that happens at detox and the people and the mental health and having some personal experiences with family members with mental health issues. It's tough. There is no quick cure, that, but when, when the crisis comes, there's got to be a place, otherwise uh, it just continues on. Mm -hmm. And so I understand the importance of it, and I think the community does too, and I, I, I actually commend uh, help you know Barry and, and the sheriff were trying to do more preventative lowering the costs of, of, of on the taxpayers by doing alternatives instead of just having to deal with the problem because a lot of people forget you know it's, it's easy to drive by McDonald's and see that person sitting there and mm -hmm. passed out on the street and until some until it's on your front lawn and you have to face with then then it you have to deal with it I mean that's what we're we're kind of dealing with. And there's a lot of moving parts in it, and it's uh, it's easy to see one side of it and not the whole picture. But uh, that's where I stand. I I would make a motion to. Well, I can't do it. I just spoke. Really? No, we haven't made a motion. That'd be my motion to do the request to submit proposal to Leon M. Harry B. Helmsley Charitable Trust and affix the chairman's signature proposal when complete. Second. Is there any further discussion? Yes. Mr. Chair. Mr. Oh, you, you want 
You, d you did twice. You got once, right? So far you spoke once? Yes. Okay. We'll, let, we'll go to her first. That's fine. Okay. So this is a, a to submit a proposal um, for what this, this trust is going to look at through Western South Dakota or the whole state? Uh, it's focused on Western South Dakota, but of course they want to go into the Human Services uh, Center and work with representatives from there. And then I talked about the eastern part of the state as well. Um, Avera has a pretty substantial behavioral health uh, facility, so having those conversations, um, of course a lot of this revolves around data collection. What they're seeing there, what they're seeing in Yankton, who's coming from Pennington County to Yankton, who's going from Pennington County to Avera out in Sioux Falls. So the bottom line is is data from Western South Dakota. So it, it doesn't mean we're gonna open something. It's gonna help the people that are already working in this area already, I believe, with what they come up with. It's gonna come up with data of what specifically needs for Western um, South Dakota, because I think we are different than Eastern South Dakota when we have uh, different programs. And through the state, I'll just tell you from being on SB 73, they're diverting us, the people back to us anyway. So we can learn to deal with the problem or we can just say the state's going to take care of it because um, what I've seen so far is, unfortunately, I'm with you, Mr. Buskrud, and I, I believe that, but I think the data is going to bring forth more information than just what we can do, um, even if it's the state's responsibility is what how the law enforcement, the firemen, um, Barry's crisis care and, and different areas and detox through that data of how they can make a difference of something that we already um, are doing, but how we can do it better through that data and figure out, you know, where's the specifics, which brings us to more cost savings than than less. Because if you don't know all the information or all the data, I think a lot of times you're guessing. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm agreeing with this as well, because the bottom line is, is I think they're going to do specific to Western South Dakota, and I think we're a lot different. Mm -hmm. Mr. DeSanto is next. Mr. Chair, um, while I I hear what Deb is saying, I really do, um, but I think that uh, a lot of times what we do as a county is we take the burden off of the, the state by doing so much that they'll just continue, they're like kids, I guess, I would liken it, where they will continue to allow us to take the weight off of their shoulders until we quit taking the weight off of their shoulders and say, you know what, it's your turn, you, it's up to you. And maybe what I could suggest is that, uh, Barry, you take this to legislature and say, this is your guys' job, this is an opportunity to get a study done, you guys go to the Helmsley Fund and, say, and recommend and request this and get it done through the state so that the state is not under the impression that the counties are going to continue to carry their weight, um, that they're going to do something about it. They know it's needed out here. There's, I mean, obviously I'm married to a legislator. They know. They just need the proper pressure applied to actually do something about it. Mr. Chair. Barry. Um, and I think what uh, is provided through this consultant could be some huge pieces when you start talking to elected officials and politicians about what's happening is um, through a number of presentations I've given, o given over the years on multiple items that it boils down to the dollars and cents and the, the data and um, as a person involved in human services for over two decades. I can tell story after story after story, but the data is the key piece to this. Yep. Eric. Mr. Chair. Eric Witcher, Public Defender. <clears throat> what I would like to speak in support of our, us submitting this grant to find out the data, and I, under, I recognize the, the comments of commissioners thinking and stating this is a state issue. It is, it's absolutely a state issue, but it, it's impacting us and the taxpayers of Pennington County today. Um, let me give you a couple of examples. If, uh, if a person who is going through the court system is deemed incompetent today, 
there, the wait at Yankton for them to be transported to Yankton is six to 10 months. And they sit in jail that entire time. We have a, a case right now, the, the first order of the, of the judge that that person was deemed incompetent, meaning the state cannot continue to try them. They're incompetent until restoration attempts have been made. They, that finding was in February of 2018. They're still here in the Pennington County Jail today, and taxpayers are paying that bill every single day at $71 an hour. Now, I don't know what this study is gonna find, whether it's gonna recommend that we're gonna have to build a building, I don't know. But it's important that we address this issue for the taxpayers of Pennington County today because it's impacting us right now. So I just had those comments and I stand so, for questioning. So Eric, you meant $71 a day, not an hour, right? Did I say an hour? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a day. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Right. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair. Mr. Zanto. I want to hear more from Ron. What do you think, what, as far as what he just said, that the taxpayers are carrying the burden right now? Yeah. Give me some more opinion. I, I don't have any doubt that they probably do. Uh, uh, all I can say is we'll be building another building because uh, for 14 million, we just built the building. I see Sioux Falls uh, Commission, uh, Minnehaha County Commission, just uh, allocated three to four million to build theirs. So uh, we must have a lot fancier one than they do, that they're looking at. Uh, it's gonna cost money either way. I just, I, I, I'm afraid, see, that I, I like what Mark said, and, I, and I've said before when we've done this stuff, we're gonna take it off the state's back, and if we're gonna do it, they're not gonna do it. Why would they? Yeah, SB 73, that is a great bill. I wonder how much that's cost the county. A lot more than it used to, I can tell you that. The state's saving all kinds of money, but we're not, we're spending that money. <clears throat> state finds good ways to turn everything over to the counties, and that's what we're gonna, and we let, let them do it, and we encourage them to do it, and that's what we're gonna do now. No, no, not, not this, <clears throat> this is probably a good deal to do. And, you know, and I, I wish, someday when I'm not here and we get, we're gonna build a new building to do all this, I hope we go to Meade County, to IHS, to Custer County and say, give us some money because we're going to be taking their people. How about Ogallala County? Let, are they going to pay us anything? No. Chairman. But that's my position. Actually, is I think we're making it easy for the state not to do it. Actually, we do have compacts with the other counties. So we, they do um, pay... Um, for their people the to be in jail and stuff. Yes, I'm on the board of the JSC. So I know we do it through JSC and they have to pay a per certain percentage. So we're doing it there. But I guess what I'm saying, Ron, is the purpose of Alliance is was to bring local city, county, state, tribal, and private organization to explore the need for additional mental health services in West River. So this this is just to explore what they're going to talk about and then bring it, hopefully, I'd say you do that and then take that to the state of what, what Western uh, South Dakota needs. So that's what the purpose of this study is. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not, okay, it's not for the entire state. Plus, we have a lot of tribal and, and different people here that if we're 68% uh, Native American in our jails and stuff, we also um, have a whole different diversity than the rest of the state. So the study is gonna bring forth that data which makes sense of what we need to make a difference. And that doesn't mean add another building. If you don't wanna add another anything to this, when it comes through, you say, okay, we've got the data. This is exactly what I said. But I, I think the data, when you're looking at something just from being in JSC and different, is to make sure that we're doing it right. Are we doing it right in Western South Dakota with this data already? Okay. Okay. I think uh, we're getting in some really in-depth discussion. I think this we're proposals to apply for a grant so we can get the study and so forth. You know, I think we're getting 20 years ahead of, of what what this data could give. I think the data is going to do. That's what we're looking for. We need data to make decisions, who to pass it off to, who to do it, and that's what this is for. Yeah. And. 
totally agree with everything that's been said up here. It goes one way, but I think uh, they made it clear this is to gather information. George, did you have something to say? Yeah, I think Mr. Witcher's comments actually add to Commissioner Buskery's argument. Typically, things have to get worse before they get better. And if, if the Paynton County taxpayers are burdened, then, then they hit on their legislators. So until the legislators get hit on, they're not going to do anything. I'm talking about the West River legislators. I know they're in a the minority. But if all the West River legislators, and most of them have part of Rapid City and Paynton County in their districts, until they feel the pinch, nothing's going to happen. So your argument actually augments his argument. Thank you. Eric, did you have one more comment you wanted to say before? Well, um, my, my concern of trying to find uh, the state to do this is it's not going to happen. So we're going to miss an opportunity to get an outside expert to come in and, and study the state and the needs and a needs-based assessment. So it's not a, you're, it's not going to automatically happen. We're going to miss an opportunity for Western South Dakota. We just will. I'm afraid if we do that. Secondly, I'm not sure this is a funding sort of problem, as of from a state standpoint. Um, I, but this is all anecdotal. I've heard anecdotally they cannot hire at HSC because they can't get professionals to move to Yankton. They've got the money sitting there. They can't do it because people want to move to Rapid City and Sioux Falls, frankly. So if we had an outside expert to come in and tell us that, then we can take that to the state and say this isn't a money problem. It's the same amount of money. It's just got to allocate those resources in a different way. But this is an opportunity that we have to, to, to find out some of these answers. And if we miss it, we might miss it for who knows how long, you know? And so it's sitting right here for us if we wanna take it. And I, I appreciate your comments. This is not a Pennington County problem, but it is today for our taxpayers. This is a long-term problem for the state that it has to combat, but it's impacting us today. Thank you. That's all the comments I have, thanks. Okay, one more comment. Okay, motion on the floor is for approval for the granted. Let's do a roll call vote. All, any further discussion from the public? Seeing none, any further? We'll do a roll call vote. I'll, I'll Buskrut? Start. No. DeSanto? No. Fairby? No. Hadcock? Aye. McCroy? Aye. Motion fails. So, we are unable to submit a proposal to the Helmsley Foundation who has really encouraged us to do this for $118,000 to study mental health in Western South Dakota. And now I will go back and tell the Board of Trustees in New York City from the Helmsley Foundation that we will not, it's, this is not being supported. Yes, unless somebody from the winning side decides to bring it up before the end of the day, the end of this meeting. Okay. Guys, this is one minute you say we need mental health for Pennington County and we need to do something about it, and the next minute we just shut something down to do it. Okay. So, really? I think that's, Deb, I, think Deb, Deb, I respect you, but it's got to come. It's got to. It's got to come from the winning side. I, I never said that. I just said next, we just shut down next something agenda that's. Item. Yeah, whatever, George, you seem okay. to talk on All yours. Right. All right, come on now. Items, next we come. No. Need to move to go into the Board of Adjustments. Looking for a motion. Can't, can't do About it yet, can we? No. Oh, shoot, yeah. Mr. Chair. It's what? We, I have one item we could do an executive session on. I have 16. Yeah, item three. 20 a would be well hold on here 20 what good morning. good morning jay alderman with the state's attorney's office you're talking about maybe going into executive session now that's what well, i do. i think we could do one item but not both i don't okay. think we have that, time to do both that's what i wanted to ask you so okay right. i would i think we have time to do the one personnel for executive session if you want or we can take a break till 10 30 and do both of them at the end of the day let's go ahead and you don't think we have time to do Let's both of them? To no do i both. don't think so 
try to do both, but let's try to do it. I mean, well, are those people are they even? If, if you were to tell me that you'd like to try to do both, I'll immediately go out in the hall and get them on the way over, and yeah. then you can maybe start with. But that the would other take one. another fifteen minutes for them to get yeah. in. Yeah, oh, well, I would probably, and then our discussion. I, I'm afraid we'd go over. I move we go into executive session until ten thirty. There you go. Second. Second. Okay, motion to go into ex executive session until 10.30. On uh, personnel and personnel. pending litigation? Yes. Personnel first. Second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Both. Motion carries, and that is to executive session. We got a short one person yet. Oh, well, move, motion to made to come out of executive session by Hadcock. Second. Seconded by DeSanto. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries with one person absent. Give us a minute, Jay, till we have a full commission. Thank you, Commissioners. Jay Alderman with State's Attorney's Office. Um, I guess I would propose that the Commission entertain two motions. Um, first motion, if I may, uh, would be um, motion to approve the uh, law firm uh, of Gunderson Palmer uh, that represents the county here to proceed with an appeal of uh, uh, Judge Fifley's decision uh, in the matter of Duane Abata et al. versus Pennington County Board of Commissioners et al. Uh, to the South Dakota Supreme Court. My motion. Been moved by Mr. Buskrude. Seconded by LaCroix. Any further discussion? No substitute motion. Mr. Farabee. To, to delay this decision until next board meeting, which is the 21st of August. Motion dies for a lack of a second, so we're back to the original motion. Any further discussion? I'll see none. Let's do a roll call, please, Kara. Buskrude? Yes. DeSanto? Yes. Fairby? No. Hadcock? Aye. LaCroix? Aye. Four to one. Motion carries four to one. Next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Second motion I'd like you to entertain would be a motion to uh, approve and authorize uh, the chairperson's signature on a public release or a media release uh, entitled Pennington County Board of Commissioners Statement Concerning Ordinance Amendment 17-02. See my motion. Second. Moved by Hadcock, seconded by Buskrude. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chair, Burby. I disagree with the, the statement, so I'll be voting no. And specifically, in our opinion, this interpretation does not serve the legislative intent of the statutes. I don't think that we're in a position to have that opinion. Thank you, Mr. Farabee. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries with one no from Mr. Farabee. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Any motion to go into a board of adjustment? Second. I moved and seconded to go to a board of adjustments. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Casey. 
Cassie. Good morning, Cassie Bolston, Assistant Planning Director. Um, item A for the Board of Adjustment is the variance request 1807. This is a request by May Heikinen. Um, this was continued from the July 17th, 2018 Board of Commissioners meeting and actually Ms. Heikinen came to our office on Friday afternoon and is again asking that this be continued to the 21st of August. She, um, due to work conflicts, is not able to be here today um, and would like to be present when you guys discuss this. I so she's motion. asking that. Second. Moved and seconded to continue to the next meeting. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Come out of Board of Adjustments. Second. Moved and seconded to come out of Board of Adjustments. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now we're out of Board of Adjustments. Now we're back to regular agenda items. All right, item B, this is a first reading and public hearing of rezone 1804 and comprehensive plan amendment 1804. This is a request to rezone five acres from limited agriculture to suburban residential and to amend the comprehensive plan um, for the same. The applicant is Gary Baldwin. As this property exists today, it's five acres um, located within the plotting jurisdiction of the city of Box Elder. What they are proposing to do is initially it was indicated that they were proposing to subdivide this lot into three lots. Um, um, uh, it is now apparent that they are considering subdividing it into two lots through the city of Box Elder. Um, they are proposing lot A to be 1.56 acres and lot B to be 3.11 acres. Um, current zoning within half mile of the subject property is a myriad of everything from general ag to heavy industrial. Um, and future land use zoning also contains a lot of those same um, zoning districts. So it appears the applicant's request is in harmony with the surrounding zoning and uses of the properties in the area um, and they are doing this in order to proceed with the plotting process through Box Elder. So staff and the Planning Commission did recommend approval of Rezone 1804 and Comprehensive Plan Amendment 1804. That would be my motion. Second. Moved and seconded for approval. Any discussion? Any from the public? Commission? Seeing none. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item C, this is a rezone request 1805. This is a request to rezone 1.04 acres from General Agriculture District to Suburban Residential District. The applicant is Allen or Rosemary Johnson. As this property exists today, it is two lots. They are both zoned General Agriculture District. Um, each lot is 0.52 acres. Lot A currently has a single family residence on it and lot B is currently vacant. Um, they are requesting to rezone this property in order to just harmonize it with the acreage size that it is right now. Um, most of the current zoning within the area um, in small acreages like this is suburban residential and the future land use is all suburban residential. Um, so it does appear that this is in harmony with the surrounding zoning designations and land use. So staff and planning commission did recommend approval of rezone 1805. Motion to approve. Second. Moved by DeSanto, second by Hadcock for approval. Any discussion? Proper. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item D. Item D, this is a layout plat request um, to create lot three of Jones Ranch subdivision. The applicant is Robert Rao um, and the surveyor is Renner and Associates. As this property exists today, it is zoned General Agriculture District. It is a 136 acre parcel and is currently vacant of any structures. What they are proposing to do here is to create one five acre lot um, off of Jones Ranch subdivision. It does not meet the minimum lot size requirements, but the next item that you're hearing is actually their rezone request. Access to this property would be off of Dawkins Road. Uh, this was routed through the interdepartmental review process and nothing of significance came back. Um, they applied for this on June 19th. Um, they're just subdividing off this five acre parcel in order to build a residence. Um, so for the purposes of this layout plat, staff did not find any significant issues. So staff and the planning commission recommended approval of layout plat 1820 with 10 conditions. Motion to approve. Second. Moved by Hadcock, second by DeSanto for approval with the conditions. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 
All right, item E, this is the rezone request for this same piece of property. It's rezone 1803 and comprehensive plan amendment 1803. Um, they are wanting to rezone that five acres from general agriculture district to low density residential district and amend the, co the comprehensive plan um, for the same. Again, the applicants, Robert Rao, so they would just be um, rezoning that five acre parcel that they proposed via the layout plat that you just approved. Um, was routed through the interdepartmental review process. It appears to harmonize with the surrounding land use. Um, the nearest low density current zoning is um, abutting the subject property to the west and the nearest future land use low density residential is directly south across Dawkins Road. So it does appear to fit with the surrounding area. So staff and the Planning Commission recommended approval of Rezone 1803 <coughs> and Comprehensive Plan Amendment 1803. Move for approval. Moved by Santo for approval. Second. Seconded by Hadcock. Any discussion? See none. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. All right. The last one that I have is item F. This is layout plat 1817 for Jeffrey Reed. This was continued from the last Board of Commissioners meeting. Um, we did discuss this a little bit at the last Board of Commissioners meeting, and there was some concern raised regarding some um, potential covenants that may exist for these properties. Um, so I did go back and do a little bit more research into this subdivision. Um, Snyder subdivision, as, as it exists today, was platted in 2003 and consists of just four lots. Lots. Um, each lot is approximately 10 acres in size and you should have a copy of the plat and the staff reports that were written to plat that subdivision um, with your packet. There was also a miscellaneous document filed in 2003 which appears to be a well agreement between the landowners of those four lots um, sharing a common well. Staff did not find any recorded covenants for Snyder subdivision specifically as it exists today, um, but I did obtain a copy of the covenants um, that were referenced by the Department of Equalization when they commented on that. Um, and they were recorded in 1972 and were recorded under the properties as they previously existed under the quarter quarter sections. Um, those quarter quarter sections um, during my research, none of those quarter quarter sections exist anymore. They've all been platted into different properties. Um, so I included a copy of those covenants with that, um, but how legal they are anymore, I do not know. Motion to approve the layout plat. Second. And moved and seconded to approve the layout plat. Any discussion? See none. Oh, Mr. DeSanto. Why were there any specific reasons why these were limited to 10 acre lots back when they first developed this, this uh, area? This 1972. 72. I mean, <laughs> I, I guess my concern is, is that um, maybe they're, if they, if they uh, subdivide, they're going to wind up putting too many homes on an area that can't handle that septic, can't handle the water uh, demands. Um, I do not know why they were limited to 10 acres specifically. Um, it doesn't reference it at all in any of the um, staff reports for platting Snyder subdivision. So I don't know specifically why it would have been limited at that time. Um, but I believe that the applicant is here in the audience today. He might know. Okay. I don't know. Well, yeah, I'd like to hear from them. He doesn't know. I, oh, doesn't know. Okay. No. I, I would guess, you know, we're talking, I was going through this too, Mark, and I probably had some of the same questions. And I'm thinking 46 years ago out in that area, you know, the city at that time, I mean, that was probably considered where George lives. Open land. Yeah. Yeah. You know. That's <laughs> George's. I didn't mean to bring your name up, George. I was just helping out with things. Your area, what, what do you think? That's okay. I made note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we do have motion for approval. Mr. Chair, is it? Mr. Fairby. As I mentioned last time, we need to decide what we're going to do out in that area. About a year ago, we denied a similar request to subdivide. <clears throat> and I'm guessing that's probably less than a half mile from this area. <clears throat> With the 10 acres of the zone limited, uh, uh, 
limited egg, and the guy bought uh, 10 acres and wanted to subdivide it, and we said no. <clears throat> a couple of the reasons were the impact on the resources, water, and, and, and not a very good area for septic necessarily. Plus, that was the, the zoning in that area. So how can we tell that guy no a year ago and, and then say yes to this one within, with that close? And the geography, the geology is probably somewhat similar. And even larger to me is, what's the plan for this area? Are we gonna subdivide down to half acre lots or one acre lots or where's it, where, where's it headed? No, I'm talking about the, the, the other, this is 40 acres, there's four tens as I understand it. So what happens to the other 30 acres? the other three tens, are they gonna subdivide? So I guess that as much as I hate government, and I do certainly hate government, government does have a role in, in planning subdivisions out in the country. Or government. Okay. <laughs> Sir, can you just identify yourself for the oh, record? My name is Jeff Reed, and uh, Reed? actually, um, and I appreciate your thoughts, uh, the family owns the now 30 acres, 10 of which was sold after a family member passed. So our, our plan, as it always was, is to keep our land in the family, be able to pass that down to our children. And that's specifically our purpose for rezoning our 10 is to allow our daughter to raise her family and keep that land structure in within the family. So that's basically our plan. It's been that way for almost 50 years. So that's, that's our desire. Okay, thank you. Thank you Motion on the floor is for approval. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. You're opposed? Aye, yes. A no from George Ferby and a no from Mark DeSanto. So motion passes. Thank you. Pass. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank Next, we come up to items from chair or commissioner members. I don't have my computer up. Give me a minute. This is the con discussion on the resolution to support to allow the appointment of members to the County Board of Equalizations. I guess I'm looking for directions from the board of whether we should move forward. I'd have to get with Mr. Uh, with Ron Buskert on how it would work. If, it, if this was to pass, how would it move forward? If not, do we wait till next year, try next year? Uh, I don't know what kind of questions we're getting from the board. Answer, I think. Um, the Board of Resolu uh, Resolutions Board for the County Commission meets tomorrow morning. So I suppose Holly can can send a uh, email to to them with this. I don't know if they'll they'll consider it or not because it says it's late. Yeah. The other way you can do it is to take it to the convention and have the, the members present at the at the meeting vote to allow it to be heard and discussed. That takes a two thirds vote of the members. Sometimes I've seen it happen, most of the time it doesn't happen. Uh, if it does, you can get up and discuss it and, and uh, it, have a vote on it. Otherwise, I guess the only other option is to wait until next year. The chairman, what's what's your wish? You worked hard on this with Holly. Well, I think it's it kind of came back in the last minute. So the board, and your, you guys yourself didn't have much time to go through it. But I think it's well worth going, moving forward with, even if it doesn't make it past uh, the board that uh, Mr. Buster was talking about, because then that at least gives them them a heads up for next year. Yep. You I know, was going to suggest that anyway, just yeah, to because I'll be at the meet, there's a meeting tomorrow too, and I can bring it up and let them. I'll maybe get a feeling in what everybody else thinks. Yeah. Vote up, Chairman. Mr. If it doesn't. 
go through that than just do the next one through the convention. You know what I'm saying? And see what people. I would I would let it vet yeah. the process. Oh, you can do both of them. Yeah. yeah. I would let it vet the process just to see what their thoughts are. Yeah, I agree. I guess I I was I'm looking at a little bit of feedback from the commission. Is this something uh, you'd like to move forward on? I, it, after I'm going to the Black Hills Area County Commissioners meeting, we've seen three resolutions that came forward, yeah. and it may not make it, but I think it's only fair to, right. to get it in front of their faces, and, and if, if you guys are in support of it, I think uh, it's not going to work for everybody. It, I mean, it, pretty much it, this this one would just be Minnehaha and, and Pennington County probably, and there's some things that could obviously change with it. You know, I mean, you may be... We maybe we we have this pass, and we still got five commissioners that want to be the board of equalization. You know, this I mean. Suggestion. So that'd be my motion. Is so it, if you want to take it, busker to both of those um, tomorrow and the convention. I think it's something worth vetting. That doesn't mean we have to do it. It's just saying something that you know these may be our suggestions. Maybe they'll change some of it and agree to it or. A lot of laws don't get passed the first yeah. time around. Yeah. Mr. Chair. Mr. DeSanto. My concerns about this is that we were elected by our constituents, and one of the things that they expected of us, I believe, was to uh, be the Board of Equalization. And I, and I feel that in doing this, we're basically telling our constituents, you know what, we don't want that job. Um, and that's too much for us, and uh, and it concerns me that they're going to look at it that way and go, you know, they're trying to discharge their duties to somebody else. My other concern is is that if we just, I understand the 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 want to allow for an appointed independent body free from political influence, but I worry that it's going to wind up being a bunch of, uh, I don't know, it, it, it feels to me like there could be huge conflict of interest uh, in in that this type of appointment. So that's my two cents worth. I'll, I'll try to answer it. And, that, and that's why we need more discussion on this. And, and I'm here because I can tell you what my intent is. You know, my, my intent of bringing this forward from the very beginning is because my experience of being on the Board of Equalization when I first started, I knew very little about property values, and here I am making decisions on it. You know, after having done seven, been on seven times now, I have, I, I'm different, but I also felt the benefit of having somebody who was who, at the local level, not at our level as as the Board of Equalization, but at the local level who had experience in appraisal and helped the rest of the bunch out. Mm -hmm. And that was tremendous amount of help. Each board's gonna come up and be different. I realize that, and that's why I think we look at it, it could change. That's why it says a minimum of one commissioner. That could be three, four. If, if you feel that it's part of your responsibility you say, I want it. Mm -hmm. So that eliminates that one. As far as uh, the possibility of conflicts of interest, I personally feel our, our equalization board, is, his name is what it is, equal. To be equal to everybody. And sometimes the people in the marketplace mm -hmm. know the results right away. They know more faster than our board of equalizations that probably do the same thing day in day out. I think it's a learning pro it's a plus for them because if we have different people in here things say did you look at this? Well yeah maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's lower than what it should be. Did you, you know I I'm, I, I'm not an appraiser and I'm not a banker but I mean I'm sure their expertise could help, uh, help us out more than hinder us I think. That's my intentions. Gotcha. Ms. Hackard. We do this for boards or committees. I mean, where we like people that have experience in those areas to come forth and give us advice and um, make a good ordinance or make a good board. We do it for the planning 
commission or otherwise, they can have conflict of interest as well. So they're not elected. But um, bottom line is, is I think if you pick people, um, you can pick some ag people and different people. They can give your perspective on some of the people that are uh, bringing forth their land. I think you actually open up a, a positive opportunity to listen to other people besides ourselves on how it affects them. So um, I believe uh, this ordinance is not to be a, like, not to sway our duties, but to have an equal board that gives us good opinions of um, what's coming forth or what's in front of us. So I, I agree with Lloyd's intentions. Mr. Chair. Mr. DeSanto. I, I don't disagree with your intentions. I guess what I'm just saying is um, I think that this year, this particular year, we did a, a great job of asking people to come forward to tell us their thoughts um, on when we were in conflict about what decisions to make. I mean, for a good example, or the couple of buildings and wall that we had a long, lots of long discussion on. Um, that also prompted me to go to the assessor's convention that we had here in, uh, in Rapid, and I learned a lot at that assessor's convention, and I'd recommend that all everybody on the Board of Commissioners attend that assessor's convention because it's, it's valuable. Um, but, uh, but I think that we can, we can ask for experts. We can request a real estate appraiser to talk to us about something if we, if we have questions without um, putting them on the Board of Equalization. So my thoughts. The only thing else I'll add to this is, is we have that authority right now to assign people. I think Holly would probably have to help me out with this with our Board of Adjustment, correct? Our Board of Adjustment's not, we have that. She can explain it much better than I can. Yes, Commissioners, there is a statute in um, law that allows you to appoint a separate body to sit as the Board of Adjustment. So this this concept that Commissioner LaCroix is proposing is not new. Sure, um, it that. is in statute already for Board of Adjustment. So okay, thank you. Very okay, I don't think we have a motion on the floor. Didn't but Deb say one at the beginning? I, did. I didn't catch what her motion was, but she did make a motion. Oh, did she make? Was to um, let the screwed bring this forth tomorrow and um, at the convention and see how it goes. You know, just see their opinions and um, what they think of what we're saying on this paper. Okay. I think it's worth it. Okay. Was there a second? I'll second for the discussion. We'll just take a vote. Any further discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chair. Mr. Busker. You know, we are, you know, the intentions are always, uh, yours is excellent. But we do have assessors on payroll that do exactly what we're talking about. And they stand there and give us their best estimate of what, what it is. Uh, I guess I would rather see some limit put on it, make it number specific. If there's five members, then two of them can be from the outside. But I, I kind of agree with Mark. I mean, we already kind of I think it's happened twice, and I've disagreed both times when how we're getting applicants for a position, and and we kind of leave the commission out of it, and and we have this board that comes and says, here, I think we should hire this guy, and we, we've already abdicated few of our responsibilities, and I'm not sure I won't, would be in favor of abdicating any more, but you know, it, it's maybe not a bad idea, but. I, I would I would be in favor of it if we could limit the number. This the way this says, I uh, say I know none of us want to do it. And there may come a time when the board, all five members say no, I don't want to do that because it does take time and it is an effort and it it's hard work and it's probably the, the least agreeable thing we do. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I don't know. I, I'm tossed no, a little bit. You know, Ron. I'm comfortable with minimum of three county commissioners and having two from the outside. I just like, I would like to have that other outside. I, I think that, 
if you can, if you want to make a friendly amendment that helped you. It would help me. Well, well that, that would that would help me. I mean, if if you if we made it at a minimum of three commissioners, minimum of three, minimum of three. If okay. all five of us want to sit on it, then yeah, then all five can. My concern is is that if is that if all five of us want to sit on it, uh, what determines whether or not we get to? Who's determining that? Yeah. Well, can so, can somebody say no? I don't want you sitting on this particular board of equalization. I don't. I'm mad at you today, and I don't want you sitting on it. Chairman, this, <laughs> this, this says may. So may means we may all want to sit and we may want to appoint. Because it says county commissioner may also appoint equalization of assessment of property. I'm oh, sorry. I just messed up. The county commission may also appoint members to serve on the county board of equalization. May. Yeah. So if we all decide that, you know, no, we're all sitting on it, that's fine. What, what I'm saying is let it vet through the process and see what other counties say about how their equalization process is working. And then um, this might not be the bottom line of it. You might find out that there's other areas that... I don't have a problem with that either. Okay, I, that's what I'm saying. So you don't really have to do a number. If I screwed, you could, it says well, me. Uh, I don't want the number. You know what? I, I, I'm sorry, Deb. I think <laughs> just within the discussion here, listening to these guys talk, I, I don't have a problem with three. Actually, three is a good number because then that the majority of the board is the commission, right? And, and elected part. But then they, I, I'm okay with the, making them three as minimum. I would make a friendly amendment to this that the three minimum commissioners on the board of equalization um, may. No, may isn't in there. Yeah, no. minimum of three. Commissioners and two and two um, outside members. Yeah, and I'm not sure if if five is is the number that you're supposed to have on a board. Holly, do you know? It, it, the statute does say five. For the equalization board. Yes. It says the county commissioners shall sit as. Yeah, but some. Yeah. So some counties are three, at three some yeah. are five. I don't think there's any more than okay. five. So since we we are basically required to have five, then. Correct. Okay. Okay, I'll take the amendment since I made the motion. You're okay with the friendly amendment? Just work, you worked on this, Lloyd. So. Yeah, you're. I can do it either way. Whatever you want, Lloyd. Okay. Your deal. I, I I like the suggestion of three. So, okay, Mr. Faraby. Oh. So, if if you're in the legislature and you say, okay, any members appointed to the board should be appointed for a period of two years. So let's say you, with the amendment, you appoint two people, and all five commissioners want to be on the board. Yeah, that's what. Well, what now, what do you do? I think all you, five. Seven. No, I think all five commissioners are are. Uh, on the board, and there aren't anybody appointed. And then, if anybody misses, like we but usually have, once again, any members appointed to the board shall be appointed for a period of two years. So you get <clears throat> point Joe and Mary. First year they sit, and the yeah. next year the board says, "Oh no, no, yeah, no." no. And so, so anyway, you got to look at this from from a you're a lawmaker. You're you're writing this into law, or you wind up with seven. You know, so you wind up with seven. You know, I've, but the larger point to me, Mr. Chair, is that in the perfect world, we've got how many assessors? Roughly 20, thereabouts. We've got, we've got a, an assessment department. In the perfect world, we shouldn't have to equalize. But our constituents come in and say, oh, no, no, well, we're being mistreated or we don't agree with the assessor. We don't agree with the, the director of equalization. And that's the process I recommend people, you know, go, if you d don't agree with your assessment, then you go to the director and try to get resolution from him. That's, that's the, your first stop. So in a perfect world, it should never go by him. But we, as we all know, it's not a perfect world. We are elected, we're the ones that have to answer. We should sit here when a person comes up here and says, I don't agree with my taxes. 
that we're the ones, the five of us, and not some outsider, should be making that decision. Whether to up or lower the, well, we're not going to up it, of course, but to lower the appraised value. This system is not broken. I, I sir, can't recommend it. Chairman. I can't vote for this resolution. Chairman. Ms. So we can say that of ordinances or anything else, because we are the final say, so maybe we should start making sure that all five of us do ordinances and we do planning commissions and we do everything else. If that's the, we are elected and we have to make the final decision, then should all of us do that as well? I mean, that goes both ways. So final decision in the bottom line, um, having outside um, people from ag or somewhere else, I still don't believe is, is a bad thing. I've sat on committees and I sat on boards and I actually like the opinion of people um, on the other side that aren't seeing politically um, how this is working from that side to this side. So it actually gives you a great perspective on both both sides. So in one sense, we're saying we don't, we want to, we're elected and we should do this. And then the next, uh, we do committees and other things where we believe the other way. So um, that's, that's not true. Right. What is irrelevant. A committee doesn't make any final decisions. A committee makes decisions that come to this board for the final decision. Right. Totally. Yeah. The Board of Equalization makes the final decision. That's the difference, I think, Deb. But, I mean, I have no problem uh, <laughs> with the more people, that I guess, that you have making decisions, probably the better it is because you get more ideas. Yeah. But it also can get to be too, too, ma too much. So, um, but there is a difference between a committee and, and us. Mr. Chair, if I might, when Mr. a person walk, walks up here and addresses us and says my, my appraisal is too high, then the five of us have to look at that individual and say, okay, yeah, you're, you're wrong, or the equalization. Well, usually there's two people there, the applicant and the equalization or the assessor. And we have to make the dis decision as to who's, who's uh, most right on, I guess, for lack of a better word. And it should be us. It shouldn't be anybody that's not elected. And totally, totally, any recommendation on ordinances or policy or whatever, I'm all for citizen groups coming to forward with recommendations, but it's only a recommendation that they don't have a final say. That's why it comes here. This appeal was, we made the decision. The committee didn't make the decision. All right. Thank, thank you. I think the motion on the floor is for approval with a, a friendly amendment to make it a three uh, commission uh, minimum at least three commissioners minimum on it. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair. Mr. DeSanto. After thinking more about what George said as far as that the sentence in here, any members appointed to the board shall be appointed for a period of two years, um, that kind of throws a monkey wrench into all five of us ever sitting on the Board of Equalization because we've it, it, we would wind up having to have seven if all if that's the case we couldn't only you know if, if let's say I say I want to sit or let's say four of us say we want to sit we've appointed two people and one person says I'm not interested in sitting on the equalization this year then we wind up with six which could really make things a mess so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have to vote no on the resolution just because of that because they're you can't can't say we're appointing them for two years and then say, you know what, you don't come this week because two other board members decided they wanted to be on the Board of Equalization. I think the easy answer is we eliminate that sentence. That would be the only way, yeah, eliminate the sentence. And we are the Board of Equalization, but we got these two extra people that can sit in on it if, if, we if we're not here. If we want them to. If we don't, yeah. And the city guys, remember, they signed up. So you have some people that have dates that they're not going to be there and they can't be there because they work and other people um, sign up more. So sometimes I was sitting all five days and sometimes there's a person that was only sitting once. So um, you can have a sign up sheet as well and then you'd know who wasn't going to show up for what dates. Because a lot of times we're missing because of something or other. Yeah, well, I, I'm trying to clarify where what you were talking about on that. 
What part? Right here. Um, I'm any to... member appointed to the board shall be appointed for a period of two years. So if we appoint two more people, then that almost means two of us have to sit out. But there's five different hearings. So you wouldn't. <sighs> See what I'm saying? Yeah. The, if we appoint two more people, you're saying you're, the, you're second, year, the five. second year you would have a mess. Yeah. So we got to we would have to take out that sentence that says that you're appointed for two years. You're appointing these people if and only if all five board members do not want to sit on. So they're like a substitute. Like a sub. Well, but yeah. Otherwise, we could have them have those two people that we appointed show up, <laughs> but they are not a voting party. They're here to give us, you know, maybe we could get, if somebody wants to volunteer to come to the Board of Equalization every time we have a hearing, then those two people that we appoint come as our so. Uh, so to speak, I think designated we, I think advisor, designated I think, voter. I think we're losing the intent of the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> you one, know, one more thought. Okay, so, so this passes. Uh, how about having people do the budget for us? Or well, what's what's next? Let's Bob not George, exaggerate. I mean, it's just it's. I understand what you're saying, and and, and that was part of what held me back from bringing this because it's it's not to take any power away from the commission. It's to help. Two people, additional people, I think is, there's nothing wrong with how we work that in there. There's some details that you guys just brought up are very, very good points. But I, I think it's a good thing to get the public involved in such processes. You know, I, so that's what I truly side. believe. That's why I brought it forward is I think it's more of a benefit not to take any of anybody's, any one commissioners or any deciding bodies Mr. Chair, power away from them. Would you be opposed to having the resolution that we appoint two people from the public <coughs> to be at each equalization meeting, but they have no voting? I think they're here for to be our advi to advise. I I think that complicates the yeah. process myself. Was, well, because we're going to end up having two people on the side. Yeah, counteracting us. We could do that right now. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. we could. We have. I think we need another year to consider this. <laughs> I think you're right. I'll second. That's a substitute motion. I'll second that. So we can continue it for motion? a year, right? Well, I, I think so. I think we we just raised so much yeah. right now about it that. So substitute motion is to continue it for a year. Table it for a year. Postpone indefinitely. Postpone indefinitely. Okay. Is that the motion? I guess. Second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. I'd like aye. to say one thing oh, first. Oh, sorry. Lloyd, I, I'd like to thank you for bringing this forward. It brought the discussion. Good. So um, when commissioners bring something forward, guys, it's it's good discussion, but also um, he worked very hard on this to try to figure it out because it, from I believe from city to county, you watch equalization hearings. Either people don't show up, which they do even on our equalization hearings uh, as, as appointed or uh, elected officials, and I, I think it was uh, a good idea. I agree. It, as long as, I mean, it, we've had the discussion. Anytime you yeah. can have that long of discussion on something, it's worthwhile talking It's about. important. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, how is the one that did all the work? I planted the seed, but. <laughs> We're moving along. We yeah. used to just have to have three people show up, so you only had to be there about five or six <laughs> times. So. Yeah. Yeah, in the well, city, thank they, you, Holly. the city literally they do a sign-up sheet, and unfortunately, you have whether you're elected or not. You you sh you look and see how many people show up for the city one. You'd be surprised. Okay, All folks, right. moving right along. You want to oh, vote on county that? achievement? Do you want to vote on that? Oh, <laughs> probably. Just <laughs> check. <it. laughs> Thanks. You're expecting a lot. <laughs> All in favor of postponing indefinitely. Uh, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we come up to the County Achievement Award.
possible nominations. Um, we have the new courthouse project or the new highway office. I, my personal opinion is after working with uh, the courthouse uh, project and seeing how that went, the amount of work to keep the historic preservation of that building is what sticks out the most. I know there's some opposition about a lot of different stuff, but if you, there had to be some custom stuff made up, frames and forms and, and all that other stuff, and a lot of the, the, the original building had been kept in, intact and worked around. Um, I don't know if we have any, Holly, do we have anybody here that wanted to talk about them besides yourself? No, not to my knowledge, sir. Those were just two suggestions that I threw out there for you. You don't have to do any. Yeah. You can come up with anything else that you feel is innovative uh, that the county has done over the last year well, Holly, um, for that program as well, or that program. award. We've had a lot of different awards and different things this year. Um, do we have different departments that we go in and do you send this to all the departments and see if they have any suggestions? I can. The only thing is this <coughs> is due next Friday. So we wouldn't have time to submit them for this year's round. Okay. Maybe for next year we yeah. take it through the county. And we've won and the last two years, you know, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Pushing our luck. Hey, you it's know, getting to be an ugly fight between us and Meade County. They seem to think they get to win every one that they apply for. And they won a while. So he ago. calls me and says, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. DeSanto. Something that stands out to me more than anything is the effort that um, one department, anyway, of building is in grounds uh, goes through to build That's what I mean. um, the furniture needed to try and save the county money. I like that. Um, that. That, to me, stands out in my mind as some extra effort that's being made um, to not spend these enormous amounts of money on furniture by them going out and actually building what needs to be done at a much reduced cost. So I guess if I was going to nominate anyone, I, I'd nominate whatever department it is or the shop department in the buildings and grounds. Uh, Let me answer that for you. Yeah, answer that for you. I mean, that's exactly why I, I, I said the, the courthouse here, because the buildings and grounds crew have done an amazing woodworking, yep. the woodworking stuff on the judges' chambers, they've done that. They've done all the restoration of Judge Davis's room, keeping all that art. I mean, they had to make custom molds. That was buildings and grounds. Okay. And not just those forms for the concrete that they had to make. They did a lot of meticulous woodworking that really saved the county a lot of time and money. That's That was one of the reasons why I chose Then I'd back that up. Second. <laughs> How I can get together with the buildings and grounds and write up something, correct? Correct. I will put together the proposal. That's a good job of doing that. Yeah. And, and I personally would like to see the award or the mention or the nominations be those specific people that are that are responsible for uh, the artwork or the however you want to call it. Done it in the past if we've won the award in at the convention in September, it'll come back here for you guys and you can present it to that department. And there are two individuals that um, Mike Peterson actually recognized for their work okay. on that project that we can get them here at that next commission meeting so you guys can do that recognition. Good. So thanks. Good. Who do we have the motion from? I was going to ask you the same thing. It just kind of all happened. You guys I, just... I think the motion come. Do you want to take the motion? Okay. Take I had just saying, was that? Okay. And the second was from the bus group. Okay. To nominate buildings and grounds. Well, to nominate the courthouse remodel. Okay. Courthouse entrance remodel project. Yeah. Courthouse. Okay. Yeah, they made some cornices and stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. There, you know, in their shop to match what we had and it was broke and stuff. They, yeah. they still have those forms job. over yeah. there. They're pretty cool. All right. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.
Next, we come to committee reports. I'm not going to bore you. No. <laughs> Nor will I. I've been gone. Okay, I have a couple things. The chamber, we had the egg recognition for Dan Warren had um, his barbecue there or his uh, steaks were amazing. The food was good and it had a lot of different organizations of ag there that were informing um, different groups about some of the ag uh, benefits. Um, that was pretty awesome. And then again, we have the fair going on 17th through the 26th. There's some really good events going there this year. Um, we invite the public and uh, we're doing some things with looking at, again, the 550 of what we can do for stalling and get that done. We do have Amanda Scott. She was here today um, from the city. She is the president of uh, uh, the city council. She is on our um, fair board now, and what a great addition. Um, so we are moving forward on a few things with fairgrounds and improving the fairgrounds and how we can make bigger and better events. So I'd like to thank all the committee there. Anyway, those were two of them I went to. Good. Yeah. I, I will just mention that while well, Ron and I both attended the Black Hills Area County Commissioners, so that went well. There's nothing really, there was a couple of resolutions that come forward. Uh, you'll probably hear about that they, they discussed. The second biggest meeting that I had was the South Dakota Advisory Committee to the Civil Rights. We had our meetings I'm on that board and we had the meeting in Pine Ridge and in Fort Pier uh, last month, which the hearings went very well. It was on subtle effects of racism in, in South Dakota. So we took testimony from many, many community members and actually I was really impressed with the Justice Center. That's where Charlie Alvarez could, had gotten our hearing held at and that was just a, a beautiful building and it, and uh, uh, touring around the town uh, was very enlightening. It's changed. It's been many, many years since I've been on Gala or or over in that area, and so it changes your impressions. And it was good. But the the public testimony. Just one thing I I got to say about the public testimony. You know, after sitting and listening to the police department, you know, when we hear about. Uh, the police department needs cultural advisory, advisory training and so forth. I've sat in through more, uh, I'm on the advisory council for that too. I met with the police chief on, on uh, uh, Pine Ridge and, and in some of the testimony we got, the same complaints that we get here in Rapid City, you're getting the same ones there and it's all you know, I think they only got like uh, four non-native police officers. So, I mean, it's it, that's just something that that struck home when I was when we were listening to some of the testimonies. You hear some of the same problems, the service, how they were treated, how you so forth. Uh, and our testimonies will be out in probably November. It'll be in written form. So, if anybody wants a copy, I can get when we get them done. Probably give them to Holly, and she can make you copies. Okay. Those are they're really good. And they'll present to the Board of Civil Rights. I, I believe Rich is going to probably go this fall to present it, our findings. So, but that's all I got to report. Nothing here, sir. Otherwise, we're up to approving the vouchers. To approve. Moved by Hadcock. Second. Seconded by Busker to approve the 584,675 11 in vouchers. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Whoa. Oh, Mr. Faraby. Obviously, I'm going to vote no, but I'll just pick out one here. And $915 for a hotel room for an NDAA summer summit. Uh, the state's attorney's office. That seemed like a pretty healthy hotel bill. Okay. So we just people just yep. go when they want, where they want, without any, over, any apparent oversight. I'll be voting no on the vouchers. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Two no's, one from Farabee and Mr. DeSanto. Got it. Public speaking? Um, oh, public. Yes. Oh, <laughs> 
Anybody items public? from the public. Is there any items from the public? Anybody who wishes to speak? No. Nope. So I would look for a motion. motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn by Hancock, seconded Second. by DeSanto. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.